great history will tell you as the display goes on. Look at that, what a sight, what a lovely sight. And sound, dare I say, sight and sound of the Catalina. This particular air freight was converted for water bombing. Spent a lot of its time in Canada before it came over to the group that operates it now. And there is a group of people who operate and maintain the aircraft. They make a contribution to the running costs to keep her flying. And uh, in return, they get time in the airplane. They can fly it as passengers or if they have a license, invited to fly from the cockpit. And uh, look at that, what a lovely sight and sound of the uh, Catalina. Max, is there anything more wonderful? Look at it coming towards you, ladies and gentlemen. You can see those two big engines, Pratt and Whitney, R183092, twin wasp radials, 1,200 horsepower each. That wonderful, drumbling sound of the radial engine. Glorious. Thing there. See the wheels up, of course, uh, tucked in the belly there. It can put the wheels down and land on grass and tarmac and all water. And I have a confession actually to make to you all. I've got uh, a flight simulator at home and I've got this model on my flight sim and I can't resist flying this when I get the chance. Now th this is in, in, in sort of peace time and subsequent to the war, World War II, and these aircraft uh, were beloved of downed pilots because they would be rescued in the middle of oceans uh, all over the world. Many, many lives were saved. Subsequently, they became uh, fire bombers, for example, they had a new lease of life. But when they were flying in the military, they had a modest crew of 10, if you can believe. Pilot, co-pilot, bow turret gunner, flight engineer, radio operator, navigator, radar operator, two waste gunners, and a ventral gunner. There was a serious amount of power fire on those puppies. Yeah. A lot of interest. And if you've got any uh, registration spotters with us, there often are at the shows, this is Gold Puffer Bravo Yankee Alpha registered on the CAA aircraft register. And a lot of the restoration work was done at Duxford, of course, home of the historic flight and the, uh, the museum up there. And uh, many, many hours spent restoring uh, Yankee Alpha up at Duxford. So we can see and enjoy her today. The, some of the performance uh, the details are, are extraordinary, Max. I mean, it's no modest cruise, uh, 125 miles an hour, but they had a range, they could stay in the air for hours and hours, a range of two and a half thousand miles. They couldn't get very high, they got up to 15,000 feet. They didn't climb uh, very well, a thousand feet a minute, but what a range and what a payload. Now, look what's different, ladies and gentlemen. Get your cameras out. You see, the wing has changed. What have they done? Well, they've dropped down. They are retractable, those pontoons, and those are used when the aircraft is going to land on the water so that if a wing tip for any reason drops down, then it won't dig into the water because that would be uh, very terminal. You would uh, literally uh, go end over end and cartwheel. So they're very important, the pontoons, uh, when landing on the water. Do you reckon you could fly her, Brendan, if I gave you the keys? Oh, they're wonderful old things, yes. Yeah. They're quite heavy, yeah, but um, yeah, just open the taps. This is the whispering sound of the wasps. And uh, thunder off down the runway. Well, thunder's probably a uh, slight understatement. <laughs> I've just asked our air show director whether uh, the Kathleen is going to land, but unfortunately not. It right. has to stay at a safe distance. Here we go. Look at this head on that. Lights on. Lovely. Beautiful. Pontin and I think also he'll do a down and dirty, so he'll dangle the Dunlops as well. Oh, so right. we'll have everything hanging down. And when it comes past, so you can just see it there down after the, uh, the, the wheel in the body, there's a big uh, turret and it's a big blister turret that you can see out of, uh, which gives you a fantastic view. And as it comes past, at the end, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see somebody's face in there, uh, and they will be waving at you. So please do give them a wave. This is the uh, final display item of the uh, first part of the show. We'll be having uh, just under an hour's break, and then we will be off again this afternoon, uh, starting off uh, with unbelievably noisy typhoon.
uh, followed by yours truly. I shall get in my chopper and uh, see what I can do with it. Uh, Otto, Max will take over there for the Typhoon and Otto, and hopefully I will be back. All of the gear down. There it is, that's the landing configuration one. So everything down and dirty. Just like my simulator. What did I tell you? Marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. Royal Air Force had a few of these, Brendan, as did the New Zealand Air Force in their time. Oh, they, they were involved in some famous operations. Of course, one shattered the Bismarck before it was terminated with a significant degree of prejudice. Indeed. Probably just he's just circling, just waiting for something, maybe for that aircraft to get out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Got Delta Wing, you see a Delta Wing, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's go, go, go time for the Hawker Typhoon, the Eurofighter, 
to come through here at the Western Festival. It's going to be noisy, so uh, hang on to your hats, everybody, as we welcome the RAF's leading strike aircraft in active service at the moment. We've managed to get it down here to here it comes. demonstrate to you this afternoon this powerful fighter designed and built by a European consortium. The brains from many countries have contributed to the design of the aircraft, not just one country. I suppose one could say a little bit like Airbus, if anybody's flown on Airbus. Yeah. Okay, look. Right. That's look still coming left. out the back, that is accelerating. Look left, here he comes.
crew of one this aircraft or two when training. And uh, in service were also the Luftwaffe in Germany. Brian Lawton just showing us there. Uh, and a rotary pilot and uh, today has some significance 
in as much as I can remember Brenton as Biggin Hill in 1974 when I first met him when he was doing the trunk top landing. He used to land a pipe of cub on the top of a lorry and I never thought years later I'd have the privilege of commentating with him. Well there goes Otto, which is this small uh, two-seat, very manoeuvrable helicopter and Brendan is flinging it about as only Brendan can. Incidentally, using an awful lot of pedals to get that helicopter to manoeuvre like that. A lot of the trickery is in his footwork, as well as the control of the cyclic, which uh, alters the pitch of the helicopter. Now, believe it or not, Brendan is a keen mountaineer and ornithologist. You wouldn't know to meet him, but he's got a remarkable knowledge of ornithology. That's seven birds, by the way, and uh, he's a much in demand after dinner speaker, as you can imagine. We're lucky to have him with us here at the Western uh, Festival. All in off over helicopter. Going smoke on, flying sideways now, Brendan is. Something those pedals like crazy. That would be interesting, I think he's got the doors on. It must be pretty smoky up there. No doors on the side of the helicopter this afternoon. He doesn't mind us now, Brendan. thousand hours flying Brendan has now with over 40 years experience. I've tried to catch up with him but I don't think I ever will. Also a much in demand instructor in Brendan and uh, as he was alluding to earlier, he's the guy if you want your authority to display an aircraft at a show, he's the go-to man to make sure your credentials are intact. So he wears many hats to Brendan O'Brien. But it's making some lovely shapes with Otto. You can see the wind catching the smoke and blowing it on shore now. Get an idea of how strong that wind is this afternoon. A bit of a sea breeze, I suspect. Sideways once again, but it's back to you. And another job that Brendan was doing at one time was the British Antarctic Survey down there in the South Pole. Uh, it was a very interesting time he spent down there. Off over the helicopter has been flying in North America and Australia prior to Brendan acquiring her. Very, very well known on the display circuit in North America. Lives in a big blue crate. Uh, all the spares came over in a big blue crate from America to the small aerodrome in Kent called Headcourt, where it lives now and it's maintained, beautifully maintained by Alan, the engineer, to keep it all flying in top flying condition. And Brendan's looking forward to also making a lot of new friends this year on the air show circuit. Very impressive, low-level display over the beach. 
sure he's not over it, not only its maneuverability, but just how entertaining the helicopter could be. So there goes Brendan, just over the cloud. And uh, if we can just give him a wave and a big thank you to Otto, the helicopter. If Brendan will be looking down, let's see to make sure you're waving and steering. A huge thank you to Brendan O'Brien. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget that to the South Alps for the missing children. Let's hope we find them. I'm sure we will. Let's remember those descriptions that the helicopters gave us. Have a look left and right and see if they're near you. They might be doing hey. the same. We have just the hurricane coming to entertain us today, and here comes the hurricane now. Just the hurricane, but we can enjoy the hurricane just as much as we could with the spin. Sounds so nice the engines, don't they? Really, that's the Rolls Royce one, isn't it? It's all really smooth a bit. The Battle of Britain Memorial Flight was formed in 1957 to maintain the Battle of Britain aircraft to flying standard and display them to the public. And 60 years later, here we are with this magnificent example, the Hawker Hurricane. Started life as a biplane. Some uh, engineer decided to take the top wing off and this was the result. Very stable gun platform. And there were probably more hurricanes than Spitfires actually in action in the Battle of Britain. Douglas Bader, one of my heroes, was shot down in a hurricane, if I'm not mistaken. He uh, flew the famous Bader wing from Duxford before he was captured and sent to the rest of the war in Germany and finally Coldest Castle. Wooden construction and pilots who have flown it say what a magnificent aircraft it is to handle. Very, very good in combat. Could out turn very often this opposition, the Fock Wolf or the Messerschmitt. And if we cast our minds back, we can imagine this hurricane in battle, twisting and turning away from a pursuing enemy aircraft. Maybe turning on the enemy and opening his guns up, browning gun, machine guns, and taking advantage of the master of aerial batic maneuvers, Mark Jeffries. And watch this puppy go. Just a quick aileron roll to warm up after the vertical. One, two, three, four points of a hesitation roll. Straight on into an aileron roll. Still going up. Pulls over. And there, left boot, right stick, and tumbles, end up, oh, there it is, that, oh, yes, that's a good one. I thought he was going to turn it into a knife-inch bit, but he didn't, that's one of the best rewards I've seen for a long time. Serious stuff. Now, you've got to fly that, it isn't a hang-on-at-home job, and the rate of roll over 400 degrees a second. Excellent smoke system as well, and there he is, oh, that's a nice one, it's a classic, he's gone round through 270 degrees, Plus one full 360. Uh, that's what we call a cap or a conical rupture There's the little blip blip smoke. A lot's going on in that cockpit. Think quickly, move quickly. Back down onto the line. Level, knife edge, beautiful. Hesitation rolls. This is all classic, world class freestyle. And there it goes again. Let's see what's going to happen. It goes, yes, no, this is a necktie. If you look at the smoke, you can see that it's really in the form of a rotating necktie as you would tie it. Not the sort of thing you want to do in the air if you're in the cockpit. There's that blip blip smoke again, which you can change at will, rolling in the vertical. Look at that. Absolutely straight, no amount of twist on the tail at all. He's going to try a talk roll, I think. Yes, he's rolling to the left. He's coming stationary. Let's see. It's half a turn. He's almost... Oh, it's... It's one turn. He's got into the smoke. Let's see how he comes out. He's still rolling, coming out of the smoke. That's a two and a half turn torque roll. Rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind about torque. That's T-O-R-Q-U-E. Back onto the display line again. Full smoke. No lips there. Again. Full air run roll to inverted. Push. Hesitation roll. 
Big climb. It's going to be, yeah, there he goes. And that's a reward. End over end. Yes, recovering beautifully. Inverted on the down 45. All these gyroscopic maneuvers initiated by standing basically with this rotation of the propeller on the left rudder. Feeding the stick forward hard, and then you start rotating. That's to the right. Well, you reversed it very quickly there. Look at that lovely freestyle rotating around the propeller. Spoke on again. Great spoke system too. Blip, blip. Coming back on with the display line. This is, this is world class. Climbing 45, inverted. Hesitation, straight into the sun. Missed it, but it's rotating. I can see the end of it. And it's, oh, yes! Very good. That's a full grab, two forward flips. Stopped in the down vertical. Uh, so much I'd like to tell you about this aeroplane. <laughs> it is amazing, but um, I'm going to keep watching what he's up to. Climbing 45, up, pull through, half loop. Oh, look at that. Very clever. Reverse split S. <laughs> I think he's trying to uh, do his own version of a half in the sky. Uh, that was very clever, but that's quite a push. He went from uh, positive to negative G very, very quickly. Uh, there's a cross rotation. Uh, with the rudder being rotated from one side to the other. Look at that rotation, look at that. It's almost like a climbing rolling circle. A positive rolling circle, so rolling and turning in the same direction. Down 45 again. Trying to shield from the sun, he's coming around low level. Great smoke orientation there. You can just hear the power from that great 300 horsepower engine, air cooled again. Uh, there he is, there's that, yeah, that's nice. It's kind of a cross between uh, a chronic long to that, named after the second attack in Oh, look at that, stop, absolutely almost stationary. Think about that, what a power to rate ratio. And still uh, being able to roll it over 300 degrees a second to the right on the way down, down 45, rolling and turning at the same time. Oh, mummy, that is a brain scrambler. That is the ultimate brain scrambler. At least he was doing it roll and turn in the same direction. The inside outside rolling circle, that is a ooh, tricky thing. Inverted. Hesitation roll. Rock right into the sun. Next side. Well, can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if you were in that cockpit, would you feel a little bit dizzy? Would you feel a little bit disorientated? Mm. That takes quite some doing. You won't do that off the bat straight off. Inverted. Okay. Yeah, kind of reward. What we call a reward. Again, all these maneuvers are processions around the propeller. Gyroscopic procession cause of the aircraft to tumble with input of rudder and forward stick. Oh, one and a half to inverted, two points of hesitation roll on the way down. That's quite low. You can see the individual blades of grass, or in this case, sand, <laughs> coming up to the each of serious motor. Or you can get yourself quite a decent aircraft as well. No problem at all. Yeah, all the the flight, flight. Not the easier than dry, arriving a car, I reckon. Anyway. I've, I've flown them. They're lovely aircraft to fly. Very, very maneuverable. So coming in on the quarter line then. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Absolutely pin perfect. Yeah. I, 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 think I'll, I think we'll have to have a word with Mike at the Reds there about that. Because that well, was so you know good. What, that might be a hard <laughs> no, well, nobody can beat the Reds. It's definitely Mark Southern. Mark Southern. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team.
At the front of the formation is Red One. He is squadron leader David Montenegro, his third and final year as the team leader. He is a former Hawk flying instructor and Tornado F3 air defense pilot. He first joined the team back in 2009. He left in 2011 having led the Synchro Pair. He then went on to be an instructor teaching on the Ticano before then returning to the team to lead in 2015. Continuing this left hand turn over breeze down now, the wings have moved forward to be line abreast on reg 2 and 3. A little bit more red, white and blue. This is Phoenix. Diamond quarter clover finishes 
over towards Greendown. And that signals the end of the first part of the Renault performance this afternoon. So far you've seen all eight jets together performing close formation aerobatics. Well now we're going to split down into smaller sections of between two and today six aircraft for some more dynamic manoeuvring. To the front left we're about to change the shape into a big T-shape known as Dagger. At the front of Dagger are red one to five. They are known as Enid after Enid Blyton's famous five. And at the back, normally with number nine, we'd have six, seven, eight, and nine. Their collective name as a formation is Gippo. Gippo was the nickname of the gentleman who first led the back four aircraft in 1968 when the Renari started flying nine ship displays. So, Enid at the top, Gippo at the bottom, cameras ready, directly ahead, getting ready to start the second part of our display. Here comes the smoke. This is the detonator. There you go, Enid. Keep your eyes on Gippo. Once again, around 800 miles an hour. 